up next on The Ten Show, we've got an author on a mission to save your marriage. When I think one of the primary reasons we go straight to divorce is that we think marriage should be easy. We think, you know, if I married my soulmate, marriage should be easy. And I'm going to give you an analogy. You never hear of a woman in labor, you know, labor's hard, it hurts, she's going to throw up, it's painful. You never hear her say, I'm having the wrong baby. No. <laughs> she says, give me the epidural. She solves the problem. But when marriage gets hard and we're like, God, it's so hard, I don't know what to do. We go straight to, I married the wrong person. We don't go, it's a problem that I can solve. And I was at a restaurant, it was date night. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my husband, I'm like, I... I can't think of a single thing to say. And I'm like, my soup's good. Yeah. That was all I could come up with. I'm like, what happened to us? Yeah. Yeah. And so what did you do? You just you thought, okay, I gotta, I gotta fix this. Were yeah. you, did you feel defeated or did you feel like, okay, I can, I well, can Well, at first I felt defeated yeah. and, 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 and then I blamed it on him. I'm like, oh, he doesn't talk. It's his problem, right? right? right. And, and then, you know, I talked to some guys and they're like, well, he talks when he's around me. Uh -huh. And so I was like, okay, it's something between us. And I'm a journalist and I was like, I know how to ask questions. Sure. I'll get to know my husband all over again. Okay. And that's my... What about your, your marriage? Should, mm -hmm. should you continue to talk about that or could that be like getting too, too deep? I think you can never talk about your marriage enough. And mm. I don't mean this like a lot of times guys are like, oh, my God, oh, yeah. I hope you don't bring that don't up again. Right. Me, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it doesn't matter how unhappy or happy you are in your marriage. It can always be better. And Infidelity from Tiger Woods to Jesse James. Why stories about cheating celebrities are having an effect on all of us at home. It's on your way coming up on Good Day Street Talk. Okay, yeah. we are back with Ruth Houston, an infidelity expert for Examiner.com, psychotherapist and relationship expert Jonathan Alpert, and marriage expert Alisa Bowman, who's the creator of the project HappilyEverAfter.com. What is your reaction to this marriage? Can the marriage of um, David Duchovny and his wife, for example, uh, they've been through uh, some therapy themselves, Sandra Bullock and her husband, Jesse James, can those marriages be saved? Well, that's up to the wife who has to build trust. Um, can she, you know, 17 times is a lot. But I hear from readers all the time at projecthappilyeverafter.com that who, they do get past this, they do do it, but is it easy? No. And some of these people, they've only been cheated on once, not with multiple, multiple, multiple people. So <laughs> it's a huge thing that he's asking her to try to get past. And yeah. that's the compulsion. These people are, uh, d their behavior is directed at achieving the goal of sex. It's fulfilling that fantasy, that drive at all costs. They absolutely do not think of their wife at home. Elisa, do you believe in the concept of, of a sex addiction, or is that just an excuse for bad behavior? Well, it may be a clinical thing, but in the end, your marriage is still trashed afterwards. So it, if you're going to blame it on a sex addiction, you're going to blame it on your mommy, you're going to blame it on all these other things, it doesn't matter. You still cheated, your wife still doesn't trust you, your marriage is still destroyed. Mm -hmm. What's Hello, welcome to Ask Dr. Manny. People have been doing it since the dawn of time. I'm talking, of course, about falling in love, intimacy, and yes, sex. And in our first segment, take a look at the not-so-perfect love life of a very loving married couple. Prepare to learn and prepare to blush. Sex was great for a while, and we had sex a lot. And I mean, I think we had nights where we did it like three times in one night, right? If you say so. <laughs> With genuine smiles and a little blush in their cheeks, Mark and Elisa Bowman reminisce about the routine rolls in the hay that they once enjoyed. But a lot has changed since they first laid eyes on each other 12 years ago. They married two years after meeting. And then, five years down the road, along came their daughter, Karina. Toss in a dog, a mortgage, and two challenging careers, and the result is they are too busy to get busy. So um, after she was born, honestly, I don't know if we had sex at all for like months. One day, Elisa came home with an ultimatum. And I was like, look, I'm miserable. And I was like on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being happy and zero being, you know, the pits, I'm in the pits. And if we don't do anything, we're gonna get a divorce or I'm gonna have an affair or I'm gonna kill you. Mark and Lisa decided to reinvest in their marriage. While not everyone is comfortable talking about what goes on behind closed doors and between the sheets, Mark and Elisa are more than willing to express their desires. Elisa is particularly willing. I'd like to be a little more spunky and experimental and I'd like Mark to find my G-spot. I'd like to have multiple orgasms. I ran a marathon, I should be able to have a multiple orgasm, you know? Wow. We're joined now by Elisa and Mark Bowman. First, I want to commend you both for having the courage to talk about this so openly with us. Wow, 
I'm blush a little bit. I, you know, <laughs> I, it doesn't take a te- doesn't take a lot for me to blush. But that, you know, look, that was a very good story, uh, and it's a, it's an important issue. This whole issue of uh, improving your sex uh, uh, health. Uh, so I'm dying to know, dying to know. People want to know. I want to know. How has things changed since this whole thing began? I mean, the intimacy, the frequency. You know, come on, give me a little inside track here. What's going on? Go ahead. You always let me talk first. Um, phenomenal change. Uh, the day after we met with Ian was our nooner day, and um, my husband was an animal. It was so the passion. Fantastic. The passion is back. <laughs> you, you go. You go. The passion is back. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, uh, and do you think that, because, uh, you know, things do evolve, uh, do you think that this exercise and, the, of course, all the help that Dr. Kerner has given you is going to keep you alert so that if you fall into a rut, let's say, another 10 years from now, you say, oh, recognize the symptoms, we're going to do something about it. Definitely. Yeah? I think it showed us that it's a problem that we can solve. It's not just this amorphous chemistry thing that you can't do anything about, then um, that we could work on our technique, we could work on romance, we could work on um, how, what we do to get me in the mood at night. And those were, it, it was amazing how fast we solved those problems just by making it a priority. The meditation class made me aware of me. And until that time I was denying me. It made me aware of my inadequacies. It made me aware of my fear. And because I'm aware of those things, I can now address them and do something about it. What I would like other women to know is that it's incredibly important to take care of yourself. And that a lot of times when we have babies, we think the baby comes first. But your personal care has to come first. And then your relationship with your spouse has to come second. And then your child comes third. This was the hardest thing for me to embrace because I was like, well, no, the child has to be first. But if you put the child first, then everything else sort of falls apart because you stop taking care of yourself.